my friends are since. Those of you that watch this channel regularly will know that I'm a big fan of trackers and part of that is because when I first got interested in making electronic music one of the things that inspired me was using the LSDJ on the Game Boy. There was something specific about the workflow with LSDJ that I really liked and especially the idea that you could control lots of different bits of hardware and stuff just from the Wii screen on the Game Boy and actually the combination of the Game Boy sound, that kind of raw aggressive sound with different more modern drum machines was something that I really liked. I was never one of these chip purists that insisted you had to do everything just in the Game Boy. So as part of that um, people often ask me my opinion on trackers and I guess partly because I've done some videos on the PolyN tracker, but one of the trackers that I have not covered or really looked at at all was the Dirty Wave M8. And I have to admit that I've kind of been remiss in not looking at it. Part of the reason I didn't look at it was because I had invested in the PolyN tracker they both came out about the same time and so I couldn't afford to do both. But also, if I'm honest, I wasn't wild about the idea of another portable handheld tracker device, only because I felt like it was kind of a replacement for the Game Boy, which I didn't really need. I also had kind of, you know, some reservations about the idea of emulating the Game Boy sound or just, you know, it would be like LSDJ but with digital synthesis, which I wasn't really interested in. However, I've been watching the videos that people have put up about the Dirty Wave M8 and lots of them sound really fucking good. And not just that, I've seen a lot of people from the old chip music community who have been making music and getting really excited about the Dirty Wave M8. And I've discovered since then that part of the reason for this is that the person behind the Dirty Wave M8 is the legendary Trash 80. And Trash 80 made a whole bunch of things with the Game Boy kind of chip music world that I personally really liked and made use of. For example, MGB, which is a synthesizer or it's a cartridge bit of software, whatever, that you can control your Game Boy as if it was a synth module using a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI sequencer, but also a whole bunch of work on the Arduino Boy and the whole connection between the Game Boy and different synthesizers and stuff like that. So because of that, I decided that it was probably worth my while checking out the Dirty Wave M8 personally. And to that end, even though I missed out on the pre-order cycle initially, you can download the software that the M8 runs and you can place it onto literally this Teensy development board thing, stick in a micro SD card, and then you can connect this up to your Mac, your PC, or you know, even like a Raspberry Pi or something like that. And you can effectively run a headless version as it's known. And whilst I wasn't wild about trying this out on a computer, because I don't really love composing music in a computer, I don't like running an LSDJ in an emulator or anything like that, hey, I thought it was worth a go. And I've been very pleasantly surprised, so I thought I would do a video talking about kind of my initial thoughts and experience and blah de blah. If you're interested in the workflow specifically or the sounds, there are other videos that I've put up that go into that, but this is really just my thoughts on it, so it's a review vlog, if you will. Uh, so if you don't want to listen to my voice, then don't fucking watch it. I hope you like my t-shirt by the way, this is a t-shirt sent to me by Labra Warfare. They have a really cool YouTube channel where they make some really interesting music and they were nice enough to send me a t-shirt. They are not sponsoring this video then, I just think they make cool stuff, so I go check them out. Now as I mentioned, I've done a whole workflow video about the M8 already, so I won't go into any of the features are in, you can go watch that. But I will speak about a few specific things as I think they're kind of important. First of all, there is the a various, or there's a variety of different sound sources available in the Dirty Wave M8. It's not just samples or you know sample playback or manipulation. So you have a wave synth, which essentially I believe is designed to replicate or is based on the original game. Game Boy sounds and it actually sounds pretty damn good. But there's also other uh, synthesis options in there. Notably, 
the synth algorithms from the braid module, the mutable instruments, open source synth engines are in there. So you've got a huge variety of different sounds you can get just with that alone. But there's also a full FM synth. I'm not gonna to pretend to know anything about FM synthesis, but you can play about with it and it sounds pretty good. So it's nice to have that as an option. And then of course there is sample playback. So you can load a whole bunch of samples onto your micro SD card and you know, use drum one shots or chop things up however you might like. Related to the sounds in there, there's also a bunch of effects. So with any tracker, you can obviously modulate the effects per step, which gives you lots of options for different dynamics and interest and I don't know, whatever. It lets you modulate things in a much more powerful way. But there are global um, chorus, reverb, delay and a limiter, I believe. And whilst these, I've been told, are not the most high-end effects in the world, whatever they've done in there, it they do sound pretty fantastic. And actually that's something about the M8 that I find really good is that you can mix things down and I, you don't have to, or at least I haven't found myself having to master them afterwards if I'm sharing them on YouTube or whatever. Uh, with other devices, I often, even where there are limiters and stuff in place on the device, I tend to have to go into my DAW and make things sound the way I want them to. But with M8, everything really does sound pretty good. And that's especially a bit of a surprise given that the uh, algorithms for the mutable instruments synths that are in there are also in things like the Micro Freak. And whilst people often think that sounds quite dry and you know, airy or whatever, like a digital synthesis sound. I don't get the same impression with the M8 and it might be, I think, partly due to the effects and the way everything just comes together. So that's really nice. On that kind of topic of mix downs, if you know me, you'll know that I have a bit of a thing about exporting stems and exporting WAVs so that you can take it away and do mixing. I don't like to do it all in the box necessarily. And with the Dirt Wave M8, there's a whole bunch of options in there. You can export a WAV mix down, you can export individual stems of each track, but you can also export what's called a bundle where it exports, you know, your WAVs, but it also exports the samples that are associated with your project. And this is awesome because if you've ever created a project on another device where the samples aren't stored with the project, they're just linked to, and then you go and move things about in your SD card, then you'll know that it fucks your project because then it can't find the relevant files and it's a bit of a nightmare. This is a really neat, smart solution to be able to bundle your songs down into one kind of folder or whatever. So I like that a lot. It's something worth noting. Now on to my kind of first impressions and thoughts and stuff about the M8. I initially feared that it was going to be one of these things with a huge learning curve. And that's partly because the feature set is so great and there's so much depth to the features in there. But actually, Especially if you have LSDJ experience already, or really any tracker experience, it's really easy and quick to get up and going. And even though there's loads of features, it isn't particularly complicated to work out if you know the basics of how trackers work. And the thing about LSDJ in particular is that I don't think it was that hard to work out how to use, and I'm a bit of a moron. So surely this should be just as easy. And I think actually, even if you don't have tracker experience, the learning curve isn't as huge as it could be. If you compare it to something like the Akai Force, which I found quite unintuitive, there's something quite, the flow is nice on the M8, so uh, don't be put off by the kind of complexity or the perceived complexity and the kind of power of the M8. It is easy to use. On that point, I think it's worth saying specifically that if you do like LSDJ and you like that workflow, then it's almost exactly the same on the M8. And it's almost as if actually the, the M8 is a representation of lots of people who've made chip music because there's all these folks who when they were younger made music using LSDJ and for whatever reason gelled with the workflow. And then, like myself, get interested in making music using you know, different synths or Eurorack or fucking drum machines or whatever it might be. And the M8 is almost like the second coming of LSDJ in a lot of ways because it takes all of the stuff that you liked about LSDJ and it 
brings them in a new package with lots of different added features and workflow improvements. So like having dedicated shortcuts for certain features that were in LSDJ, like Deep Clone, it, it just works really nicely. And now I can understand after playing about with it for a bit more, why people from the old chiptune or chip music world are so excited about this, because it really does feel like a very natural progression in terms of both workflow, software, and ultimately, hopefully, hardware. My final thing to say on the first impressions and kind of feature set and all that kind of stuff is that everything just seems to work the way you expect it to or you want it to. So even though this is just one person or you know a very small team making this thing, Everything, there's no like glaring bugs in any of the major features. And this is something that I've come to experience with many boutique manufacturers that there is often, a, you know, a good few months where things just don't work or you think, oh, this is a nice idea, but it just doesn't work the way you want it to. And I guess this is actually testament to Trash 80's experience and involvement in the community that everything just works as you would expect it to. The export function works fine. All the features just make sense. And I've not run any ma any major issues at all. And that seems like a kind of obvious, stupid thing you would take for granted. But uh, I do think it's worth highlight highlighting that in particular, because it's not always the case with devices like this that are boutique and pre-order and whatever else. So yes, very impressed with that. And actually, if this is the kind of standard of work on the code, then I'm really excited to see what the hardware is like because that will be a pretty interesting experience if it carries through at the same level of quality. Now, naturally, there are going to be comparisons or questions about how the M8 compares to the PolyN tracker. And in 2021, we're kind of spoiled for choice with trackers. You've also got the NerdSec in there. But the PolyN will be the main one that there are questions about how they compare, partly because they both came out at roughly the same time, but also for me, because I've done lots of videos on the PolyN tracker in the past. And I have to say that I'm not going to go into any great detail on this at all, because it's really a, the topic of another video. But also, I haven't played with or used a hardware version of the M8 yet, so it wouldn't be fair or even just a straight comparison to talk about them. But one thing I will say just now is that purely on feature set, if you're looking for something like uh, you know, synthesis within the M8 itself, then or within the tracker itself, then the M8 is the only option because there is no synthesis engine per se within the PolyN tracker. But with that said, the PolyN tracker does also have benefits to its workflow. It doesn't work the same way as LSDJ. It's got quite a different approach to the tracker. And specifically for me, the thing that stands out is that the live performance mode on the tracker is much more, well, there's much more ability within the tracker from PolyEnd if you want to change lots of parameters at once. You can play live with the M8 as well, but it uses LSDJ's kind of approach to live performance, which is much more about triggering clips and not necessarily giving you the ability to tweak lots of parameters. So I think that's a big strength of the PolyEnd tracker and um, I would encourage them to really flesh that out more and make it a, you know, a centerpiece of the PolyEnd because that is one of their biggest strengths over the M8. Ultimately though, the preference will come down to feature set and also workflow. For me, having both, the workflow is quite different and the results are often quite different because obviously the PolyEnd is sample based, then I end up making very different music on that to the M8. Because even though in the M8 I can use samples, then I gravitate more towards using the synthesis engines just because of the way the workflow is. And so over time, once I've played with the hardware M8, when I get it hopefully later this year, then I'll do another video and do like a more direct comparison. But for now, I would encourage you, if you um, want to try out the M8, then get a Teensy 4.1 board. The setup online can seem a bit daunting at first and a bit technical, but it's really not that difficult at all. 
Uh, all you need is that and the micro SD card. And I have a go yourself. If you just want to pre-order the hardware and don't want to faff about with this stuff, of course the pre-orders are closed at the moment, but if you go onto the Discord channel, uh, that's where they advertise when pre-order slots open up, and that's how I got one recently. But also, the other thing to say about the Discord community specifically for the M8 is that it's active and friendly and helpful and there's lots of people in there who are doing lots of cool things with Emmy and are excited about it and in many ways it reminds me of some of the earlier days of the chip music community after it had kind of taken off a bit where lots of folks were making lots of cool stuff and eager to help each other out and explore what was possible and I think that community feel is really important and will actually solidify the kind of future of the M8. So it's worth taking a look at that. Hopefully, uh, if you're curious about the M8, this was useful. If not, go watch my other fucking videos. Um, aye, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll have more M8 stuff to show you over the coming months. If you've got questions about the M8, by the way, feel free to ask. Uh, I can't promise I will be able to answer any of them, but there we are. And go watch uh, Labrat Warfare because he's a cool guy.